how's it going folks? Time to do a bit of an update on our poor neglected bathtub worm farm we have here underneath the house. Um, next to the aquaponics and the chickens or chooks, it's the third most requested update so here you go. Uh, just to bring you folks also up to speed who may not be familiar with this little setup, um, we have a bathtub that we use as a worm farm funny that. Um, what we have is a horse manure bedding in there. You can use other bits and pieces as well. Cow manure, a coconut coir. Some people use peat, I think, where it's cheap and available. Uh, we let it make sure it's aged, so any chemicals, uh, the worming treatments or anything like that is broken down within the manure and it won't harm the worms. Um, we call it a migration feeding and harvesting system basically because we feed up one end of the worm farm. What that means is the bulk of the worms, even though they can eat the bedding and the process the bedding, they will travel up to where the fresh vegetable and fruit scraps are, process that, feed on that, and it pretty much will leave not many worms down the other end of the bed. After they've finished processing that feed and the, the bedding up there has been turned into nice luscious castings, you move the feeding end down the other end and of course the worms will follow to get the good tucker. So the worms move down, they migrate down, and that leaves you some nice fresh har um, castings you can harvest, take out and use around the patch, put in some more bedding and the process just repeats itself over and over again. It's a great way to um, basically have worms and castings going at the same time without having to pick out individual worms and harvest them. Um, I know people who run whole worm farms, just throw the bedding in, the scraps in, feed it up, make sure it all turns into castings, then they harvest, they use something like a tremel or a rotary worm harvester, pull the worms out and then start up a new farm. I just like this rotational um, system, it's easier on the worms and it's a lot easier for me. The castings, when they come out, they'll have a couple of worms in them, a couple of eggs in them, but I don't mind that. They just go out into the wicking beds and help the, uh, the populations in the wicking beds around the patch boom as well. So, yeah, a bit of a win-win all round. With this farm here, around January, I harvested a large ball of worms and they went into a compost cage we have running outside. I just wanted to add some compost worms in there just so they can value add to the compost. I mean, it probably was rich enough with bacteria and whatnot to go in the beds. While this bed has been going, you yeah, so, so, I think I could have, yeah, run it a little bit better. Over summer, we neglected it. I didn't take the, um, the finished end out, the castings out, and replace it with new bedding. I just let it sit there. Uh, grabbed a handful here and there as I was planting out different plants around the patch. And what's happened is the castings have dried out. Now, what that means is that the, the microbial activity, the bacteria in there, they've pretty much well died off because the castings have dried out. Microbes need um, moisture to survive. They also need fresh nutrients all the time. So while those castings are nutrient rich they're pretty pretty microbe or bacteria poor as far as I can tell um, plants and bacteria in the soil have a, a great symbiotic relationship the bacteria help feed the plant the plant helps feed the bacteria so um, yeah it really is good to have nutrient dense castings as well as microbial rich as well so that's something I sort of stuffed up with also too we've had a couple of invaders into the worm farm I grabbed some compost with from the cage a while back just to boost the numbers in here and it had slaters in it uh, and they've been in there and they've been consuming the vegetable scraps and whatnot that we've thrown in there and yeah they've pretty much all been robbing worms of nutrients I mean they're not really going to harm the worms I could harvest them um, I think they're called lamb prawns apparently they taste like prawns or shrimp but yeah I'm not game enough to do that we've fed a couple to the chooks but yeah I think I'll just leave them be the other end of the worm farm was a different story altogether the castings were dark they were moist they were rich they had worms in there and they also had a few other invaders as well some mango flower beetle larvae um, but a lot more healthy looking than the dried castings down the other end what I've been doing lately is using our pulp from our juice morning juice and I've been putting that in the worm farm and that's just been processed by the worms and turned into you know nice damp rich castings worms have been loving it Unfortunately, a while back, I left the lid off our container, our bucket. We have a bucket out on the back stairs that we put all our veggie scraps in, and I must have left the lid off it, not creating a good seal. Uh, beetles got in there, smelt the, the nice sweet juice scraps in there, and it's laid some larvae, and when it's gone into the worm farm here, we've ended up with a booming beetle farm. So, while they're not hurting the worms, it is not ideal to have other life forms in there consuming all the nutrients that the, the worms could be processing for us and turning into castings. So I decided that due to the, um, the, the bug infestation
infestation or the larvae infestation, the slater infestation, and also too because I had dried out the castings down one end and the other stuff was ready to go, I thought I'd harvest all the castings from the farm and yeah, just clean it out and restock it with fresh manure starting from scratch so to speak. I ran the dry castings through uh, one of the compost sieves we picked up at the local markets a fair while ago now, one of the best purchases I've ever made. Um, I ran the, the castings through and I separated all the lumpy chunky bits of compost that were added into the farm and brought the slaters in and it left me with some nice dry looking castings, still nutrient rich so they'll go out into the patch, feed up some plants and bacteria. When it came to the other end, where it was being fed, I had to pull out the worms individually and the beetle larvae, they were segregated, put into different containers and I needed a larger gauge mesh sieve for that one. Basically because um, wet castings clump together and it's just easier to rub them through a larger um, gauge mesh. So ended up collecting loads of castings. Um, they're going to go great out in the patch. I think the plants are going to love them. Uh, and I also harvested a whole heap of uh, larvae for the chooks. Could feed them to the fish, but I think they get enough treats with grasshoppers. So after the worms and the grubs were harvested, I decided I wanted to clean out the whole farm, make sure there were no slater eggs left. So I took the rocks outside, put them in my compost screen, gave them a bit of a hose, made sure they were nice and clean. All that water was collected, and I then went and put it on other veggies in the patch. So I think those plants really would have enjoyed that feed. Um, and then those rocks just went back into the worm farm. I also cut a new section of weed cloth to separate the bedding from the drainage rocks. The new manure was added back into the worm farm. What I decided on was using some cow manure I've set aside. I've been wanting to try cow manure in the worm farm for ages, so I've tossed that in there. First of all though, I ran it through the compost screen out the back just to break down the chunk size. Also made sure it was nice and moist. Uh, moist enough so that if you really, really squeeze it, um, no water comes out, maybe a drip and that's about it. So that's all in there now and I release the worms and we're just waiting to get some more pulp to give them a bit of a feed. As for other moisture going in there, I don't water the worm farms. I figure with the juice pulp and the other veggies that go in there if they go through the food processor, there's enough moisture in there to keep the, um, the worms happy. I just need to make sure that I rotate the ends a lot more often to keep the castings moist. What we'll do now is, actually I might give you a look at these bug larvae. So this is the ice cream container full of bug larvae. It doesn't look like much at the moment, but we'll just take them out here. Just to give you some idea of how many bugs I pulled out. Now these guys here, uh, I left some food in there, but as you can see we've ended up with some fantastic castings from these guys. Um, they do they do make, you know, manure, so there is some nutrient there that could probably be used to feed up the, um, the plants out in the patch, but yeah, I, I think I'm pretty much all going to run them through the sieve, try and separate some of these um, castings, bug castings, from these guys, and we'll go and pop a few down to the chooks a bit later. So, but absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you can, I don't know if you can make it out, but the surface of that is just absolutely crawling with the bugs underneath it. So, loads of these fellas, some rather large ones. Um, like this fella here, and then really, really tiny ones. So from now on, I'm going to be very careful about putting the lid on the bucket so this doesn't happen again. I mean, I don't mind the odd black soldier fly getting in there, but yeah, definitely don't want these fellas in there. I think the chooks are going to be very grateful that we saved them, though. So this is the casting yield from the bathtub. What we've got here along the front here is roughly round about, I'd say, between 35 and 40 litres of nice moist castings. This is from the end that was getting the... Um, the juice scraps and veggie scraps and we've got probably around about 45 litres of this dry casting material from the dry end. So this stuff here is pretty much all going to go straight into root pouches and garden beds and whatnot straight away. Um, I'm going to keep some of this primo stuff for a bit of a project I'm working on. Um, just to show you this stuff here, this here is all the bits and pieces that was pulled out by the fine screen um, including slaters you might be able to see them crawling around on top there so this stuff here while it has got castings in there um, yeah bits of corn cob uh, mango seed that looks like a piece of turmeric or uh, galangal actually and an apple sticker. Um, this stuff here will just go straight back into the compost cage that I'm feeding up at the moment. So there you go folks, there's a bit of a look at the bathtub worm farm harvest. Um, yield wise for the castings, mighty impressed with that even though some of them are a bit dry, the plants won't complain. Uh, also too, the worms, they looked, the ones that were in there looked nice, big and healthy, um, but the numbers were lacking. So what I'm going to do is make up a little DIY worm trap, um, thanks to the guys on the Facebook vermicomposting group for that one. 
Um, I'm going to make up one of those little traps, pop them in a compost cage and try and harvest as many red wrigglers as I can to put back in there, boost those numbers and hopefully uh, start up the other bathtub farm we have under the house next to it. So um, recommission that one and make loads of castings for the patch. The castings, um, well they're pretty much all, a lot of them will be going into some barrels and air pruning pouches, root pouches for these guys. I've got a dwarf lemon, a dwarf lychee, and I'm taking a bit of a gamble on that one. Um, an Australian finger lime. Look those guys up if you haven't seen them uh, before, the fruit on those guys. Um, it's called citrus caviar, um, some people call it. Uh, beautiful fruit. And the other one is a kaffir lime. Now kaffir in the patch died for some unknown reason, so I've got a kaffir lime. Starting them all off in um, air pruning pouches or barrels, and once we get some idea on how we want to finally set this place up, um, because these trees are going to be a permanent fixture, um, they'll go in the ground. But in the meantime, we can advance them a little bit in the air pruning pouches and barrels. So that's enough of that. So I hope you enjoyed the update on the worms, you folks who are curious about how they were going. Um, and I will pretty much will leave it there. If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, pop them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you where I can. Other than that, I hope everyone's absolutely fantastic and I shall see you next clip. Cheers, folks. Hey, girls. Chookies want some grubs? There we go. Nothing goes to waste at this place. Bon appétit, chooks. Oh, blacky, you're pushy. Actually, I just saw a beetle larvae. Ooh, I just squashed a beetle larvae. Um, 